Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. And this is our regular weekly message. And today's message is entitled, Know the Truth and Be Free. With so much lies floating around today, it's really difficult to, to distinguish between truth and those lies. At every turn, it seems like they're trying to stifle truth and exploit lies. And without a north point, it's really difficult to establish truth. The media, you can't depend on the media or you can't depend on the news, news to bring you truth. Because basically, they, they're just filled with so much lies, so much deceit. If you cannot prove it, you cannot trust it. But today, we will explore a surefire way of identifying truth, real truth, truth that can set you free. So would you please turn with me to John chapter 8, verse 31 through 38. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are offspring of Abraham, yet you seek to kill me because my word finds no place in you. I speak of what I've seen with my father, and you do what you have heard from your father. At a glance, if you're not paying attention, it's easy to miss. But at a glance, it would seem like verse 31 through 33 blatantly contradicts verse 34 through 38. What I mean is this. In verse 31 and 32, it says, So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Therefore, those two verses are directed at those who believed in him as the verse indicates. Now, how do we know that they were believers? Well, look at the verse before, verse number 30. As he was saying these things, many believed in him. Then, just as we read in verse 31, Jesus said that to those who had believed in him. So these believers were the ones that Jesus was actually speaking to those who had believed in him. In verse 34 through 38, Jesus is talking to the unbelievers who were also there. They were trying their hardest to trip him up. They were trying their hardest to disprove what he was saying. They were trying to make him into being a liar. So, as I said, Jesus was talking to those who believed in him. He was not talking to unbelievers, but rather to the believers from verse 30. It, it might seem like, like it, but uh, from, from their, their response, they might seem like they were not believers at all. So usually the verse will say the priests or the Pharisees or the Jews or something to identify who it was that was talking or who, who uh, Jesus was talking to. But in this instant, it said they. So, so with that word, they, that word isn't really they at all. It means to separate. So in other words, the believers began to disagree with each other. And those who answered were the ones who were offended. Therefore, they were not set free. They did not recognize truth when they heard it. Their spiritual ears were not very discerning. You see, without the Holy Spirit, it is near impossible to distinguish truth from falsehood, facts from lies, 
Pilate was confused at, at the word truth as well. Look at what he said about truth in John chapter 18, verse 38. Pilate said to him, what is truth? After he had said this, he went back outside to the Jews and told them, I find no guilt in him. Pilate was confused at the meaning of truth. At least he, he did not recognize truth when he heard it. He did not know what it was. He lived in a time when pagan gods were worshipped as truth. The world was centered around religion, but they were still bound up in their sins. They were still shackled. They were still chained to, the, to, to their iniquities. So how can we answer Pilate? How can we describe truth so that when others hear it or when others see it, they too can recognize it and that it might not escape their grasp? Well, truth, or to recognize truth when we hear it, to recognize truth when we see it, is fairly simple. Jesus told us the surefire way of recognizing truth when he said in John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32, Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. I want you to notice two points that lead to two awarenesses. Point number one, abide in Jesus' word, meaning be obedient to what Jesus told us to do. Point number two, be true disciples of Jesus, which can only be done by abiding in Jesus' word. Now, two awarenesses. Number one, you will know the truth and two, the truth will set you free. So first of all, you must be Jesus' disciple. You must be a disciple of our Lord Jesus. And how do you become a disciple? By abiding in him. If we abide in Jesus' word and be obedient to his word, be obedient to what he told us to do, we will be his disciples. But what exactly does abiding mean? It means to stay to remain, or to continue. So if we continue to live our life according to the precepts and according to the commandments that Jesus set out for us or told us to obey, we will abide in him. And remember this. Remember that love is the greatest of these commandments. First of all, we have to love the Lord our God. Most of all, first of all, and that we must love others. We must love our neighbors as ourselves. We must even love our enemies. So once you are a disciple of Jesus, then you will hear his voice. Upon hearing his voice as a disciple, you will obey. And those that do will be set free. So the, the bottom line is this. If the truth you are clinging to does not set you free, you do not have the real truth at all. I want to say that one more time. If the truth that you're clinging to, that truth that you're holding on to, does not set you free, then you do not have the real truth. But someone will say, I thought Jesus was the only one who could set us free. As per John chapter 8 verse 36. It says, so if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Well, yes, that is true. It is only Jesus, the Son, who can set us free. But I want you to watch this. John chapter 17, verse 17. It says, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. So I ask you, what, or better yet, who is the word? Well, John chapter 1, verse 14 tells us, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. Jesus is the word that became flesh. Jesus is the word who became flesh, full of grace, full of truth. Jesus, the son, is the word. And Jesus is truth. Therefore, he is qualified and anointed to set us free.
Therefore, if the truth you are holding on to or claiming to have does not set you free, then it is not the real truth, but is a lie disguised as the truth. Because Jesus will set you free from sexual perversions. He will set you free from cigarettes, being a slave to smoking, being a slave to drinking, drunkenness, cussing, pornography, sexual prom promiscuity, homosexuality, a lying tongue. From, from all of these, Jesus will set you free. And when he sets you free, you will be free indeed. Our court system requires witnesses to answer the following question to the affirmative. They say, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? It simply means that you are pledging or you are promising to tell the whole truth without omission, without embellishments, or without alterations. It is just the pure, unadulterated truth. Now there is a truth that is true, but it is not the whole truth. Therefore, it will not set you free, but instead it will enslave you. Look with me, um, please, to Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 through 17. It, it, it's, it's about the serpent in the Garden of Eden. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say, You shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the, the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were open. And they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. The woman, or the serpent, told the woman, "You will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of, of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil." That was not a lie, but neither was it the whole truth. It, that the serpent made it seem like it was a good thing. Their eyes were indeed open. They did indeed know the difference or come to know the difference between good and evil just like God. The serpent deceived the woman by telling her a partial truth. That is why honesty is the best policy. policy. You do not want to mislead people with partial truths, especially in terms of their souls, especially in terms of eternity. This is the truth. Every one of us will spend eternity in one place or the other place, either in eternity with Jesus, where, where we'll never ever know what it means to be hungry again, or thirsty, or have need, or have a want, or be afraid, or having a, to slave away in the hot brawling sun all day to try to make a living. But having every need met, having every want satisfied, always, always at peace, always, always surrounded with love, and having the joy of the Lord always in your heart. The alternative is this, to be abandoned to the lake of fire in constant torment, always hungry, always thirsty, always in great fear, always in great pain, always in great anguish, always in great suffering, always in eternal darkness, never having rest ever, ever again. That, my friends, is truth. 
Because it does not matter whether you believe this or whether you don't believe it. Whether you're willing or whether you're not willing. Whether you're ready or whether you're not ready. It does not matter. That is truth. We will spend eternity in one place or the other place. Whether in peace and joy and happiness or in eternal torment. You see, when we pass away, or when that trumpet of the Lord sounds and the dead in Christ raises, rises to life, when the quick and the dead stand before the great judgment seat of Christ, He will separate the sheep from the goats, the sinner from the saints. And the goats He'll place on His left hand side, and the sheep He'll place on His right. And those on his right, he will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Welcome home, my beloved ones. But to those on his, on his left, he'll say, depart from me. I never knew you. And you will go into eternal torment, eternal punishment for rejecting the truth of Christ. And that, my friends, is the gospel truth. It is not embellished. Neither is it leaving anything out. Nothing that would change truth in any way. There is no such thing as my truth and your truth or their truth. There is only one truth. Truth that the Lord Jesus himself said to his Heavenly Father. Your word is truth. If it contradicts God's word, it is not truth. For truth cannot contradict truth. Neither can there be an, another truth that contradicts what God says is true. Because only God's truth is the real truth. Yes, I know that might sound like it's narrow-minded. It might sound like it's from the dark ages, but God's word is the only truth that will set us free. God's word is the only truth that's out there that we can believe in, that we can stand on, that we know never ever changes because God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And his truth is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God's truth is true. So, no truth and be free. So I want to ask you, are you free today? There's an old hymn called, There's Power in the Blood. And it goes like this. Would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you o'er evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. Verse 2. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleanse into Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood. If that describes you today, come to Jesus. He will cleanse you. He will forgive you. He will make you whole. He will impart to you his truth, real truth. Chain-breaking truth. When Jesus reveals his truth to you, you will be set free. And Jesus is the only real truth. You will know the truth and you will live and not die. Would you like to know that truth today? If you would, here's how. Become a disciple of Jesus. How do I do that? By saying this prayer. A simple prayer, asking for forgiveness. Jesus will accept you and you will be his disciple. Pray this prayer with me if you want to become a disciple of Jesus and live forever. Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Help me to live for you. Help me to love, to love you, Lord God. Help me to love others. Help me to even love my enemies. That I might be obedient to your word. 
and that I might know truth and be set free. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Here's what I want you to do. Find yourself a Bible-believing church. Stay away from those progressive churches that embraces the world and have a half-truth. Go with the real truth, the full truth, and nothing but the truth. And Jesus will accept you. Find that church. Join that church. Be discipled in that church. Find yourself a Bible. Either that's the one that, that, that you have on your bookshelf off or go and buy one. And read that Bible every day. Highlight those verses that are meaningful to you. Those verses that will help you through the hard times, the difficult times, the times of temptation. Read and understand and, and commit those verses to memory. And when Jesus comes back, he'll find you doing what it is that you're supposed to be doing. And he'll say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of, of the Lord. I want to say thank you so much for joining us every week. We appreciate you so much. My name is Kenny Yates. Be blessed and stay blessed.